Item number SCP-6188 Threat Level Green Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-6188 is to be disguised as a World War II memorial with two armed guards stationed on site. A top is to be placed above SCP-6188 to protect it from the weather. Six locks are to be placed on the hatches and emergency hatches of SCP-6188 to prevent anyone from trying to enter it. When testing is scheduled, the area around SCP-6188 is to be closed off for maintenance purposes, while a temporary tent is to be built around SCP-6188. Any person attempting to enter SCP-6188 are to be restrained and placed into police custody for degrading a war memorial. Description SCP-6188 is an American M4A3E2-76 W. Sherman Jumbo Tank displaying signs of wear and rust. On the left side of SCP-6188 are located two holes presumably caused during combat. The name a killer can be seen written on the right side of SCP-6188 in an advanced stage of corrosion. SCP-6188 is located in a forest near Long Germany. All attempts to move SCP-6188 has been unsuccessful. Accidents ranging from mechanical failures to accidental injuries on present now occurring every time an attempt was made. When SCP-6188 is entered, the subject vanishes and wakes up within SCP-6188-1. SCP-6188-1 is separated into two parts, a large factory at its center resembling the Fisher Tank Arsenal. Also known as the Glanbronk Metal Center before its closure in 2013. In Glanbronk, Michigan, and a large dense forest that surrounds the factory. It is impossible to exit the forest as any who wandered into it found themselves back to the factory. It was recorded that necessary commodities such as food and water generate endlessly within SCP-6188-1. It is unknown how the food and water materialize within SCP-6188-1. An unknown entity designated SCP-6188-2 resides within SCP-6188-1. SCP-6188-2's appearance is as of yet unknown. Descriptions mention the presence of a light similar to a car's headlights, which hides the body of the entity due to its intensity. The light was recorded to emit 50,000 candelas and is approximately 120 centimeters in diameter. Subjects that encountered SCP-6188-2 mentioned the presence of a smell similar to a decaying corpse in the area where SCP-6188-2 appeared in. When a human being comes into view of SCP-6188-2, it will give chase until the subject is caught or out of reach. If SCP-6188-2 manages to catch its prey, they will both disappear. The body of the subject will reappear two days later on the outskirts of the forest or of the factory, displaying signs of heavy mutilation and lacerations all over the body. Addendum Journal 6188 SCP-6188 was brought to the attention of the Foundation following rumors of several people going missing in the forest near Long Germany. During the early discovery of SCP-6188, Researcher Miller, along with his assistant, was sent to the location of SCP-6188 for analysis. Assistant Researcher Fon entered SCP-6188 to gather samples and disappeared. After several minutes of no response, Researcher Miller notified Foundation Command of the presence of an anomalous entity after discovering the disappearance of Assistant Researcher 1. 
Several days later, Assistant Researcher Fawn emerged out of SCP-6188 with a journal in her possession. After being taken in for questioning, it was found out this journal was maintained by Assistant Researcher Fawn and contained information that they had collected during their stay within SCP-6188-1. The following are some relevant and are noteworthy excerpts from Assistant Researcher Fawn's journal. Page 1. Around a week ago, me and my assigned researcher were sent to do sampling and confirm the possible presence of an anomaly. There was a rusty old tank there. Researcher Miller told me to go in it and take a sample as well to check out the interior for anything noteworthy, which I complied. After entering it, everything went black and I found myself in the factory. I encountered a few other people after wandering around, quite a friendly bunch. They had formed a sort of settlement in the upper area of the factory. I was brought to two men, probably the chiefs. They were both in military uniforms, although one was grey and the other light brown. They told me everything I needed to know about this place and the dangers, as well as the oddities happening around. Page 5. It seems this is some sort of dimension, and the main cow is being that tank, as everyone I have asked in the settlement last week call entering it for varying reasons. Food and water doesn't appear to be a problem, as the offices within the factory seem to replenish themselves every three days. And as it is common with anomalies like this, there's something roaming in the outside. With my years working for this company, I'd be more surprised that there weren't one. Apparently, this thing usually roams around the forest, but it sometimes go into what they call a hunt, where it will start actively searching the factory for people to catch. Thankfully, it can't enter the upper levels due to its size and the staircases being merely spiral ones. Page 11. Something strange is following me. Once a day, I'll see the same half-built tank somewhere in the factory. And thinking about it the first time I arrived here, it was the first thing I saw in the middle of the factory floor. I asked the settlers about this, and they told me they'd never experienced something similar, although one of them mentioned that one of his friends once complained about being supposedly followed by a tank. They scoffed it off as him being high on the morphine he took. He was apparently caught by the creature before my arrival, although they mentioned never finding his body. One of the chiefs who knew him the best told me he was a former tanker, operating during the Korean War in the Persian apparently. That night, I was met with a dream of a screaming man surrounded by darkness. This damn thing is getting to my mind. Page 16. I was assigned to watch duty today. The sentry's nest is located on the rooftop, gives a pretty good view of the area, although I noticed that the forest stretches past the horizon. Near the end of my shift, I noticed several trees in the outskirts shaking a lot with loud sounds echoing. I notified the chiefs over the radio and they issued a call telling everyone to head back to base immediately, saying that our hunt was about to begin. We could hear it growling and stomping within the factory for the entire night. At around 3 a.m., I heard a scream outside. We found her two days later, near the outskirts of the north side of the forest. Ever seen a bee attack? Well, I did, and it looked really close to that, although with a bit more charred skin. Page 22. Something is happening. The hunt has been lasting for two days now. We accounted around seven disappearances. It somehow managed to enter the upper level and attack the main entrance to the base. We haven't heard back from the barricade and watchers since. They are probably hiding or dead. People were scared, and some of them even started spreading rumors that I was the cause of the creature's attacks, as it never was this active before I arrived. Page 24 During a downtime, the chief sent out a scouting team to discover 
how the damned thing managed to come to the upper levels. I was selected among four others, and we went to check the several barricades, and all of them were emptied, but in good condition. When we reached the last barricade, however, it almost as if war happened in there, burnt marks, blood, guts. A few meters from it, we found a huge hole in one of the concrete walls. This freaking thing coughed its way from the lower levels through a wall, but that when it hit me, the smell, a pile of around six to seven corpses had been placed in one of the corridors nearby. Page 25. It was almost three weeks since I'd arrived, and we've been attacked almost every three days, some hunts lasting as long as four days. One of the chiefs picked me, and another guy called Joseph to go scavenging with him for meadow. The door had been badly damaged during the last hunt. I learned the name of the chiefs that day, Peter and Jack. Peter told me how both of them wound up here, talking about the rumors circling around the camp that I'm the reason for the creature's aggressive behavior. Joseph was ahead of us while me and Peter were talking. We hadn't noticed that Joseph was no longer in front of us, as a blinding light suddenly lit up on the other end of the corridor. We ran like hell. Peter and I got separated as he told me he draw the attention of the creature. It was the last time I saw him. Page 27 when I arrived alone and breathless, everyone was looking at me with disgust. Some started saying that I pushed the other two to save myself. The others blamed me for the death of one of their leaders, demanding that I be pushed outside in hopes to stop the creature. Jack, the remaining chief, tried to calm everyone down to no result as the mob grabbed onto me and knocked me unconscious. When I woke up, everything was black around me. It's been five days since that happened. I think I should be dead, but it doesn't look like it as I still have everything on me. Good thing I packed a flashlight. I have to say, this feels strange. I've always been on the end that observes and documents anomalies like this. Being on the receiving end of it should terrify me, but it doesn't. Page 29. Walking through the darkness keeps me awake. I don't want to fall asleep this time. I keep dreaming about this same man every time, shackled by the darkness around him like I am right now, screaming for help into the void in the hope of response. I write while walking ever forward to keep myself awake in hopes to reach someone or something that will let me leave. These visions keep waking me up. I no longer want to see them. Page 39 I don't know how long I've been here. The last few days have been tiresome, and I couldn't sleep for many nights. In all this time, I wonder if Miller noticed I was gone. Did he even look back in that tank, or just left the scene as nothing seemed out of the ordinary for him? Will I ever be able to see Everyone ever again. I feel empty inside. Despite the flashing light, I can only see darkness all around me. I think I will stop this journal for now and sleep. I've been feeling awfully tired. End of log. Addendum 6188 After exiting SCP-6188, Assistant Researcher Von was put into custody to be questioned on his experience with SCP-6188. Following this, Assistant Researcher Fon was reassigned to Researcher Miller, who was assigned to study SCP-6188. Once on site, Assistant Researcher Fon discovered a picture in the motor compartment of SCP-6188.